A lot of people ask me, hey, John, how do you move so fast in the Linux command line or in Linux terminal or, or in Linux? So I wanted to use this video to offer that and address that. So let's dive in. Step number one, uninstall tmux. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. I know all of you tmux fanboys are going to grab your pitchforks and beat me up and take my lunch money. It's a joke. All right, let's do it for real now. Let's do it for real. So as I mentioned, I do not use Tmux personally. I see the value in it. I see the love. Originally, I actually used Screen for a long, long time, but I am now and probably always will be and tend to recommend to people to use Terminator. So Terminator is a GUI application. I mean, it's just a regular shell emulator, but it offers you the terminal multiplexing and the split screens and the control that you'd like with Tmux and that sort of thing um, in a different way. So it's not all console based. So sure, if you're working like a TTY, you won't be able to use it, but in a regular desktop interface that you might tend to use, if you like to use that, uh, it is a great option, in my opinion. So if you do not have Terminator and you're working on a Debian-based system or an Ubuntu-based system or whatever you would like to think, if you have apt or apt-get or aptitude as your package manager, you will end up running sudo apt install Terminator sudo of course so you'll end up wanting to type in your password so you'll offer the super user permissions and i already have it installed in my case and i'm using terminator right now so the benefit of using terminator is that you could m modify the keyboard shortcuts and set them to whatever you'd like the same way you could do with tmux or screen or any other application you'd like and Make them what is super duper comfortable for you. And I would recommend pouring some time into that, just configuring your own keystrokes because it's super convenient. So I tend to like to stay on the keyboard and I don't like to go move my mouse. I'm a keyboard junkie, but I don't use a mouse, right? I, I'm on my laptop. I don't have a, tr I, I have a trackpad and that's it. I'm not using a full length keyboard. So I st tend to stay compressed and kind of like tied to that. So I like to use like the super key and the control key and the alt key to be able to bounce around and do things. That's why you see me frantically alt tab and switch windows and all that. So what I have set in Tmux to be able to, excuse me, <laughs> wow. What I have set in Terminator and the antithetical when I say Tmux to the whole video, when I, what I have set in Terminator is the split screen keyboard shortcuts using the windows or key or the super key to be able to split my screen in one direction. So if I use my Windows key to the right and I hit the right arrow key, I'll get a vertical split. So that way it looks like, okay, I'm just splitting the window in half like that. And I can hold down control and hit plus to be able to zoom in and out. Uh, you can also use the trackpad or just like regular scrolling to be able to zoom in and out in a window. And I do that as often as I can when I record videos for you so you can actually like see the content. And the benefit of that is that Terminator by default has the keystroke of alt up and down or left and right to be able to move between the split screen windows. PWD, DIR, etc. Who am I? ID and just bop around. I use windows key down to be able to create another horizontal split and then I can do the exact same thing in here. That's kind of handy. So when you're using Bash, obviously you want to be using your up and down arrow keys to scroll through your recent command history. And that is going to be super duper helpful for you if you end up running the same command multiple times. Um, make sure you're in a regular PTY. So you could go ahead and like select things with the tab autocomplete. Start to type in one word or whatever you're looking for and then press tab to autocomplete it or tab tab if you need to even think of different ideas like as what you might be typing in. So if I were to type in AP and then start to hit tab tab to see the list of options as the commands that I could run, that is the benefit there. Now, let me actually show you what all those key bindings are within Terminator. So I'm going to right click on the window and select the preferences. I have my default profile with just a regular system font and the colors that I would like, but the key bindings are kind of what I specifically wanted to show you, right? So we're looking for all of those split options. And down here, you can see split horizontally, I have set to super down 
and split vertically I have set to super right. So that gives me those super uh, keystrokes as I'd like them. And that's like super duper close to me on the keyboard because it's right beside where my control and my alt key and all those things particularly are. So I am a fan of that. Yo, you guys wanna see that? Here, let's, let's get meta real quick. So you can see on the Dell XPS keyboard, my control key and Windows super key and alt key are all right here. And the function key is also pretty great because I can just hit that on like my left hand and then my right hand is still controlling these arrow keys. So I can just bounce around super duper easily. And I love how comfortable that makes me at the keyboard console. Now, of course, you could modify these whatever to your heart's content, but that's what I tend to use. And that's basically it for my keyboard shortcuts because that's easy enough. Using alt to be able to bump around works really well. And because it's split with the GUI, if I had a long string of text that I wanted to copy, and if I were going across multiple lines, like Terminator knows that, okay, I only want to select the text only within this pane. It's not going to scroll over to the right-hand side where Tmux might end up doing that. And I tend to dislike that because then you have to hit shift and do a different copy and paste thing. And it's just a clunky. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I like Terminator. Additionally, if you hit control shift Z, you can zoom in on a pane and that can be super duper handy to toggle in and out of one that you're particularly focusing on. Now, if you were typing a long command with lots of arguments or things that are like things that you need to throw in there, right? I tend to navigate in this line with control arrow keys. So yes, you could hold down one arrow key in one direction. You'll have to wait for your cursor to get all the way over there. Or you might be stupid and you might hold down the backspace key. That's awful. You're wasting so much time. Um, so I really, really recommend you use the control left and right arrow keys so you can jump around word by word. And then if you need to delete or modify one specific part of this command, uh, you can hit alt and backspace, right? So that will delete the word rather than like you holding down the backspace key. That is significantly faster. I think if you move with your left and right arrow keys holding control and then hit alt backspace to delete word by word as you need to. Also, don't hold your arrow key to go all the way back to the beginning of the line or the very, very end of the line and don't use backspace to completely remove everything. Just hit home or end on your keyboard. So on the Dell XPS laptop, which I'm using, and I, like I said, I liked how the keyboard kind of keeps me tight and cramped in that little space there. The function key, and then the left arrow key activates home. So it's like I'm jumping back to the beginning of the line. Same thing with function key and the right arrow key. That brings me to the end of the line. So that is significantly faster to be able to move left and right and still using the arrow keys with control as needed to to jump word by word. That is super duper handy. And then if you needed to delete everything, if you were just like done with this line, you can hit control U on the keyboard and that will delete the entire line. The entire line, the entire line, control U. Now note, when you use control U, that's deleting the entire line from where your cursor is. So if I were to have that same, this is a long command, please sub. If I hit control U with my cursor here, it just removes this is a long. All, everything before where my cursor was. Now you could do a lot of different things with that. There are plenty more keyboard shortcuts. Obviously up and down will let you scroll through your command history, but also control R lets you reverse search through your command history. So if you had one command that you knew you would use to perform some local file inclusion with curl and you just wanted to get that output again, you could start typing for curl and maybe that would end up working through it. Um, Nice. You could start searching for something that you might be particularly looking for, like how did you use Python in some earlier command. Use Control R and then start to type in what you're looking for, and then Control C to break out of that if you if you're tired of it and don't need it anymore. Okay. Now another thing back in the Terminator preferences, one thing that I really really like about this in Terminator just as well is that if you wanted to, you could create multiple profiles. So different panes could be set with different profiles. So if I were to add literally, I, I'll just keep it super simple, right? I will add another profile, but I'll call it like white or something. And then if I were to change the colors rather than like 
gray on black or white on black or whatever, I'm going to end up using uh, black text on a white background. And now I could close this and I could specify any pane that I want. I could just click into it or use my alt left and right to move into it. And then I can right click and select the profile that I might like. And I could just simply choose, let's use that white profile. And now that whole pane is a little bit easier to read and work with and use and see. Super duper nice. Because that way, if I am doing some crazy in-depth hack or pen testing or bug bounty or capture the flag or whatever, if I have like one terminator, excuse me, one, one terminal window open that I know is the target or the victim, and I have a reverse shell already, okay, I can mentally in my mind like change that color background to be red or to be blue or to be something to differentiate it from me in these other terminal panes where I might be doing something else like running GoBuster or running Nmap, running Nito or whatever or whatever. And of course, you could script all this if you wanted to. You could have Terminator start up with all these different multiple panes already set for you. So that's kind of handy and that's kind of nice as well if you're interested in that. So... Okay, that's a long smattering. Um, I will offer this to you just as well. If you have never Googled the Bash shortcuts or like Linux terminal shortcuts, I really recommend you do. There are a lot of these and you might be able to find some other peculiar things you could do. Like even when we're using commands, if you wanted to denote or reference a previous command, and maybe just run it with sudo, you often see the trick like, okay, bang, bang, or exclamation point, exclamation point, and you'll get the output that you expected without having to have to type that whole command again if it were a very, very long line. Now, there are plenty of other of those, right? So this resource is one of the Google results that just simply comes from searching for bash keyboard shortcuts or terminal Linux terminal hotkeys or whatever, and you can note, okay, go to the beginning of a line, go to the end of a line, Delete characters, the same thing that I was showcasing, control U. There's also control K to clear everything after a cursor. Of course, clear the screen with control L, stop whatever's running or exit the shell. This one's kind of neat. Swap the last two characters before the cursor with control T. You can copy and paste with some individual like keyboard, internal clipboard. You can undo things with control underscore, so you might need shift for that as well. And there are a lot of potential options and things. Same thing with searching through history. You could do the backwards recursive search, or you could even use control S to search forward, starting at the current line and moving down to the history. That's kind of neat. And there are plenty, plenty more of these, right? You can see all the different tabs that I have open. Some of these showcase the same stuff, but some actually have different info that you might not have noticed, right? So. When I mentioned that bang bang or the exclamation point, you could run that last command to have it take the place there, or you could run the recent command that started with whatever prefix that you specified. Or you could even print it out so you don't have to run it exactly. If you weren't sure what it was, you could just add a colon P to print it. The last word of the previous command, print out the word that this dollar sign would substitute. There are a lot of things you can do. Previous command except for the first word. That's pretty handy because that way you just get the arguments of things of a previous command or print out what that would substitute, etc. So a lot of neat things you can do. And there are a ton of these. So please, please, please Google around, see what uh, you might particularly like and see if any of those would be helpful for your workflow and then just adopt them into your workflow. Just like, okay, try and add that into a mind mapping or some muscle memory that you end up using while you are working through the command line in the terminal. And I would really, really recommend that. But my stuff, honestly, it's super basic. It's super simple. I just try to split the screen and jump over to that new shell very, very quickly um, because I, hey, I've got a new idea and I want to go start something else or do some enumeration in the background, whatever the case may be. But there are tons of resources out where you could Get familiar with some of these hotkeys and these keystrokes and you can do the exact same thing if you want to set some of these. It's a whole world, right? There's a whole lot of customization and configuration you can do, but there are so many resources that showcase and explain it. I would recommend you go take a look. Hey, just to uh, wrap this video up, look, I like Terminator personally, and that's just me. Uh, you obviously, of course, are a different person. So if you have a different workflow or if you have, if you prefer different tools or different utilities or different software, like 
more power to you, right? I, I encourage you to find your own workflow and use what works best for you. But I did want to share, hey, this is what I tend to use because some people ask about that sort of thing. But don't, don't treat it as gospel. Don't think like, oh, this is the way or whatever. This is the way, my queen. Um, <laughs> use what you like. Do what you like to do it and, and put forth, I don't know, your own practices and stuff that, that you think will work best for you. So that's it. That's the takeaway. With the <laughs> <laughs>